very good evening to you. I am Ryan Broom with a Wednesday, November 8th edition of the CBC Evening News. In our top story, two government ministers, two senators, and senior member of the De Democratic Labour Party are among the newest justices of the peace. Seventy in total took the oath of allegiance and the ju judicial oath before acting Governor General Sir Philip Graves. Among the first, Minister of Industry, International Business, Commerce and Small Business Development, Donald Innes. Minister of Social Care, Constituency Empowerment and Community Development, Steve Blackett. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, Senator Harry Husbands. Senator Andrea Worrell and DLP General Secretary, George Pilgrim. JP is among their many duties, certify legal, do legal documents and sign warrants for arrest. For Michael Bino and Heather Aline, it's an honor being selected to serve. Privileged to be able to serve at the highest levels in your country. And it's something I look forward to and it's part of my life and I'm willing to do my best. This one I feel really, really proud to see that I can serve my country and I would make sure that I would also do my very best. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados has weighed in on concerns raised in the Auditor General's report with respect to the submission of accounts long after the due period. President Andrew Brathwaite says this can create an environment where strange things may be contrived. Mr. Brathwaite was among the speakers at a public accountability seminar at the Savannah Hotel. The ICAB boss again pushed for the proclamation of the Prevention of Corruption Act. This legislation was passed in December 2012, but has not yet been proclaimed. Um, this is relevant to the discussion, not because I'm suggesting that there is rampant corruption as revealed in the Auditor General's report, but re remember part of, the, part, of the, part of what the Auditor General says or said in the, in the last report was that if accounting controls and systems are weak and if entities are several years in arrears on their financial statements and audits, then you're basically setting the stage for fraud and, and corruption. And Mr. Brathwaite says modern legislation is needed to deal comprehensively with corruption. So the 2012 Act it's based on model legislation under the UN Convention Against Corruption. That is a 2003, 2003 corruption, um, 2003 convention which came into force in 2005. Barbados signed it since December 2003, but has not yet ratified it. And the way that we will ratify it is when that when the 2012 Act is proclaimed because the convention is a schedule to that Act. So the proclamation of the 2012 Act will basically bring the convention into force in Barbados. In other news, two females are the winners of the inaugural Barbados Tourism Product Authority's Culinary Tourism Scholarship. They are 34-year-old Nadia Burnett and 18-year-old Shari Lashley. The scholarships are each valued at 2,500 Barbados dollars. Since Shari is overseas pursuing her bachelor's at the University of Birmingham, her parents collected the prize on her behalf. Her dad, Everton Lashley, says Shari was overjoyed at the news. That child of mine was excited. She was flabbergasted. She said that she did well and she, think that she thought that well. Her presentation in terms of her statement that she made, that she really went into a lot of the different uh, areas that um, culinary arts can get involved in. And actually she's doing um, a course in um, culinary innovation and development. And that course um, is not very popular in Barbados, but certainly when she, if she decides to come back to Barbados, I'm sure that it will be a new area that she will be definitely entering into. Meanwhile, Nadia Burnett is pleased the sacrifices she made, such as giving up her job to study, have paid off. I am feeling very excited and when I got the word, I was a bit, you know, stunned. I couldn't believe it, but I'm grateful and very happy. With culinary tourism projected to grow in the coming years, young and aspiring chefs are being urged to explore the possibilities in that field. That advice from the acting CEO of the Barbados Tourism Product Authority, Terry Vanderpool Fox. One sign of this, she says, is the continuous emergence of food festivals across the region. 
the onus is on you, the student, to be as creative as you possibly can because culinary tourism, based on the amount of festivals that are already out there, will increase. And one way the visitor can experience, truly experience a culture, is through the food. As Sandals prepares for the opening of its newest location in Barbados, the Upscale Resort has begun training for its staff. A week-long orientation session is underway at the Lloyd Erskine Sandyford Centre for over 500 of its new team members who were recently selected from its job fair. They will be educated about the Sandals brand, standards and policies. Following this orientation session, the new team members will move into skills training sessions for six weeks. Well, we take a pause here, but we'll have more news after the break. It started with my love for making things. That became a business. And when I wanted to expand, I chose a partner that could help me build on my vision. A partner that made growing my business easier with fewer steps. That's banking that starts with me. It starts with you, Scotiabank. Hi, we are Raman Cole. And we want you to know that all of us play a part in tourism. I am tourism. I am tourism. I am tourism. Tourism. tourism is our business. Let's all play a part. A message from the Barbados Tourism Product Authority. Moving forward together. If you are diabetic, then monitoring your food intake is vital. Join the doctors this Friday and let them keep you on track. CBC Presents, brought to you with the compliments of Blue Cerna, Hunger Smart. Welcome back. Well, Barbados will no longer have to rely on the Trinidad and Tobago-based Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CARFA, since its new state-of-the-art public health reference laboratory is to be opened soon. That's the word from Minister of Health, John Boyce. It says the U.S. government has provided the majority of funding for the lab. The health minister is optimistic the new lab will also have the capacity to extend its services to the wider Caribbean. Meanwhile, with increased air travel, Mr. Boyce reiterated Barbados's commitment to international health regulations. One of the most important aspects of IHR is the requirement that countries will detect and report events that may constitute a potential public health emergency of international concern. International, international health regulations also stipulate that all ports of entry there and their environs must be free of vector. Our vector control unit therefore ensures that Barbados is compliant with these top regulations through its program of regular inspection and application of necessary control matters. Barbados is proud to be one of the few nations in the region to have a national physical development plan and the PDP was a focus this morning as a Barbados Town Planning Society put on a symposium to celebrate World Town Planning Day. The theme of the symposium was Ridge to Reef, De Reef Development and Climate Change and speaking at the courtyard by Marriott, Raymond Lord of the BTPS said one of the core assets of the physical development plan is a natural heritage system. Rising and adopts an ecosystem approach to the protection, conservation, and restoration of components of the environment. The recognition of this system enables the protection and enhancement of the quality of the natural environment through soil and groundwater conservation, protection of land, marine, and marine biodiversity, and the prevention of air, land, and water pollution. This is accomplished by what we call the Reach to Reef approach tackling the ecosystem at the scale of watersheds and karst units. What can be described as arguably Barbados's leading historic and cultural show will make a return to the stage. 1627 and all that dinner and cultural show is back after a period of dormancy. The internationally acclaimed presentation of Barbadian culture has partnered with the Pinelands Creative Workshop for its big comeback 
and will be performed every Thursday at the Xora Bar and Restaurant at Golden Sands starting tomorrow night. After the premiere, PRO Jacqueline Collis says after having a great history of performances, the return has been long in waiting. 1627 and all that used to be hosted at the Barbados Museum and all the other great, well, not all the others, but the main great houses here on the island, like um, Terracott, it was there, it was at the original Sunbury Plantation, you know, um, and we did a couple shows at George Washington House. But after a long time sleeping, uh, Mr. Tell decided, you know, to, you know, let's try it here at the, on the intimate grounds of Golden Sands Hotel. Some crime news now. A St. John man is nursing a gunshot injury tonight. Police say 41-year-old Adrian O'Brien Williams of Bowmanston was shot in the neck around 10.35 this morning. Their preliminary investigations have revealed that Williams was at a shop in Bowmanston with other people. When a man entered the shop, fired two shots at him, and fled the scene. Williams was hit in the left side of his neck and taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by private, med private vehicle for medical attention. As the investigations continue, police are asking anyone with information that can help to call them at the District C police station at telephone number 416-8200 or 416-8201, Police Emergency 211, or the nearest police station. And the Royal Barbados Police Force destroyed a, destroyed a quantity of drugs yesterday using an incinerator at an undisclosed location. The drugs were seized during police eradication and interdiction exercises conducted between the years 2014 to 2017 and included drugs from cases which had been sampled or adjudicated. The drugs included 955 cannabis plants ranging some as tall as 7 feet from various parts of the island, 1,059.3 kilos of cannabis, and 110.4 kilos of cocaine. Well, we take a break here, but after the break, we'll look at stories making headlines across the region. Upgrade to Digicel's Quick Pick Bundles. Save big on data. Get data and get unlimited WhatsApp messaging and Digicel talk. Pick a one-day bundle, a seven-day bundle, or for the best value, a 30-day bundle. Save money every single day. Pick the bundle that's right for you. Go to my Digicel app or dial star 246 number sign to buy a quick pick bundle today. Digicel. Join us from November 16th to 19th, 2017 for the Barbados Food and Rum Festival, where acclaimed Barbadian chefs and mixologists are joined by Chef Jean-Georges of the U.S., Chef Tom Akins of the U.K., Chef Chris De La Rosa of Canada to create dining experiences to delight the senses. Visit TicketPal.com and all TicketPal locations to get your tickets. And visit FoodandRum.com for more information. It's your favorite time of year again when everyone is cleaning and fixing and painting. So, are you holiday ready? Harris Paints is celebrating 45 years of color. Get 45% off all Perma products, 30% off all Ultima Plus, and many more. Plus, for every $50 you spend, you get a chance to win a grand prize of $10,000 cash. You can also win one of 45 prizes of Farmer's Choice Hams, Gas and Grocery Vouchers, and Harris Gift Cards. Get holiday ready with Harris Paints, the Caribbean champion of color. I would like to get my father a bike and my mother a bed. I would like a Samsung TV for my mommy. I want to get my mommy a tablet. I would like to get my dad a barbecue because he likes to cook fish. Available at CBC The Pine, Superstyle Shoe Shops at Sky Mall and Bridgetown. 
Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite believes crime and security along with disaster management should top the agenda at the next CARICOM Heads of Government meeting. Both of these areas, he says, have significant implications for the future of the region and need to be addressed. That our Heads of Government should tackle whenever next they meet. Crime and security uh, and disaster management. Those are the two most crucial issues that this region faces at this point in time. No other issues, as far as I'm concerned, um, should be on the agenda. So, because these two issues can and will determine how we go forward or if we go forward as a region. He was speaking at the start of a two-day carry secure sensitization workshop this morning at UN House. He is optimistic those sessions will help to improve the current methods used to collect crime statistics. We need a holistic approach. We need um, to have champions across all, all ministries and across um, all the sectors so that, in, so that when we have a request for information that is readily available. Because we cannot, I repeat this, we cannot create effective policy without the relevant data. The British Virgin Islands are open for business. During a media update on, on the country at the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Baobab Towers office this afternoon, BVI Director of Tourism Sharon Flax Brutus says after Hurricanes Maria and Irma, the territory has moved from a crisis to recovery mode. Our islands, I feel, are rebounding due to the resilience, tenacity, as well as the strength of our people, as well as assistance from the UK government, our Caribbean neighbors, and as well as philanthropic gifts from persons who have come to love the BVI, as I do. We started welcoming guests back uh, to the BVI on November 1st. Um, as the sailing capital of the world, it is our yachting sector that is first to open for business. Mrs. Flax Bruder says their luxury sector was the hardest hit with estimated damage of the entire territory placed at 3.4 billion US dollars and because of it the BVI is still not ready to accept cruise ships. That is a decision that has to be uh, made at the, uh, at the ministerial level but again it's, uh, it's very important for us especially from the cruise side um, because with the cruise, uh, cruise business it's not five or ten or 20 uh, persons coming ashore um, at one time. You're looking at thousands uh, coming ashore. So we have to be really, um, you know, really careful how we, um, we handle the staging, staging of that. I expect in the next um, couple of weeks that, um, that a, a decision and an announcement would be made as to when the BVI will be accepting cruise ships. St. Lucia is grappling with the highest homicide rate since 2011. The country recorded its 49th homicide, homicide for 2017 after the body of a young man was found in Besson early yesterday. On Tuesday afternoon, police confirmed that the deceased is 24-year-old Bocage resident Siobhan Ashton. On arrival at the scene and upon close examination, it appears that Siobhan Ashton sustained an apparent wound to the neck. He was pronounced dead on the scene by a medical practitioner. A post-mortem examination is scheduled for a later date. Investigations are continuing in this matter. HDS News Force visited the community of Bocage and spoke to relatives and neighbors of the young man. His sister, Sherman Ashton, says she lost her only brother in truly puzzling circumstances. She says the news was shocking as she spoke to him on Monday night. I heard, like, my neighbor come and tell me, um, they hear, they hear my brother die, they get him a day glow. And he has a stab behind his neck. Ashton says her brother had a checkered past and spent time behind bars and at the wellness center. He been at Borderly twice. He, then they bring him um, golden up because he always used to quarrel, get on with people. Always used to insult me. Always used to insult everybody around. His family, everybody. He come in, he asking you for something now. And he always come and insult you behind it after. Neighbor Martin Herman says he last saw the victim just before 7 on Monday night. 
In Trinidad and Tobago, with growing concern about the targeting of prison officers, the Attorney General says he wants to work with the association to stamp out corruption. At a news conference today, the AG assured that the investigations into the murders are active. The commissioners of police and prisons confirmed that prison officers were being targeted. However, Attorney General Faris al Rawi says law enforcement is making significant progress in finding the killers. One involves a known suspect in respect to which there's an active manhunt. The second one, a target has been identified and that is being processed as well. The announcement followed a national security meeting called by the Prime Minister yesterday where A.G. Faris al Rawi said particular focus was placed on prison officers' safety and security. With three prison officers being murdered in a month, the association has been agitating for greater protection. However, A.G. al Rawi says there's also a need to weed out corruption within the system. Telephones don't walk in by themselves. Video cards don't walk in by themselves. Contraband doesn't walk in by itself. And whilst there are many excellent prison officers who we salute and we know many of them addressing this issue of criminality inside of the jails is a critical issue. AGL Rawi says improvements have been made inside the prisons. CCTV cameras, grabbers and jammers have been installed. Prison officers, he says, are being provided with firearms among other things. While there has been a call for the changing of laws, the Attorney General says there are adequate ones on the books. You hang for murder. So one could say that there are a host of significant laws already on the books. What is required is for a collaborative effort to stamp out corruption in the prison service and to stop criminal empires from prospering inside of prison. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Well, a glimpse into the world of sports is next, but first, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Insurance is the most economically feasible option to cover large losses or high-risk exposures. Cooperators General Insurance, ensuring you are protected during this hurricane season. <laughs> 